Welcome to the local campaign here on Rogers TV. Thank you so much for joining us. As you know, this is one of the most important campaigns in quite some time, according to many. Um, it's, a, it's been a very compelling campaign so far. And as, as we get closer and closer to Election Day, October 24th, we turn our attention to municipal debates. Today's debate is with Ward 20 Osgood. And before I introduce you to our candidates, I'll go over the format, of course, for all of you at home and for our candidates here in studio today. We're going to begin with opening statements. Each candidate will have 60 seconds for their opening statement. The order of that was chosen at random just a few moments ago. And from the opening statements, we then begin the debate portion. So the way that works is I'm going to ask a, a candidate a question. They will have 45 seconds to answer that question and then I open it up to the entire floor and candidates will feel free to, to jump in and discuss the topics. The topics of course will be um, topics that are important to those residents in the ward itself but topics of course that will also be important to uh, residents throughout the entire city of Ottawa. So following those debate questions we will end with closing statements each and every candidate will have 60 seconds for those closing statements. So let's introduce you to our candidates here today. For Ward 20 Osgood, we start with Dan O'Brien. Next up is Bob Massaro, Doug Thompson, George DeRuz, and Bruce Anthony Faulkner. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. As I said, uh, we're starting with our opening statements for 60 seconds. And Dan, you kick things off. Good afternoon, Mr. Moderator and fellow candidates. My name is Dan O'Brien and I'm a candidate for Councillor for the Osgood Ward. My family has lived in the Osgood area for generations, which makes me extremely passionate about and committed to continuing to improve and make this ward better for the people who live here today and for those who will join our community in years to come. My campaign includes the protection of farmland and the enhancement of both larger and smaller farmer, uh, farming operations. As a director with the Osgood and Metcalf nonprofit seniors buildings, I have a good understanding of the needs for more affordable housing in our community. I would work towards the easing of restrictions and delays for construction approvals and look into various types of residential options, such as infill housing and tiny homes. I would encourage working with the province to develop a more robust home care system as our seniors are an important part of our community and they deserve to stay home as long as possible. Our young people are our future and we I'm need to... I'm sorry Dan, that, that's time, but you, you can probably add some of those in during the debate portion. Let's Thank go you. over to Bob. You have 60 seconds. Hello everyone. My name is Bob Masserl. My wife Kathy, my two sons Andrew and Paul, and I have lived in Osgood for over 30 years. We do appreciate where we live. However, I'm running as as over the years I've grown very concerned with how the city is being run and Osgood's Lord's role in it. I have been extremely dis disappointed with the approach that our local representatives have at City Ottawa City Council have taken to present the concerns of the citizens of Osgood Ward. First Doug Thompson and then his protege, Doug George DeRoos, have blindly voted for every expensive project the city has come up with. I am running because I want to stop the constant tax increases like the stormwater rain tax. In fact, I have a a petition to repeal the stormwater tax in, in my possession. I would like you to sign it when you get an opportunity. I would like to advocate that we get our fair share from the taxes we pay. In addition, I will always defend a high quality rural way of life. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bob. Doug, over to you for 60 seconds. Hi, uh, my name is Doug Thompson and as a candidate for Councillor Osgood Ward, I would like to speak directly to the residents in our ward, including those in rural Cumberland who have joined us to be part of our community. This is the most critical election in our city's history. The LRT debacle, the soaring capital debt of over $3 billion, our road infrastructure crumbling before our eyes, the lack of police presence resulting in an epidemic of speeding and increased crime rate in the rural areas, as well as the stormwater tax that has uh, been put on all properties uh, on wells in the rural areas. The most critical issue uh, that uh, residents have said is the lack of ambulance availability. To date, there are over 1,100 times that there are no ambulances available in uh, the city. There are two recent separate uh, incidents where Osgood Ward residents had to wait for over six hours for an ambulance. This is an issue I will deal My with apologies, immediately. My apologies, Doug, but, but your time elected. is up. You'll be able to share those issues later on. George, over to you. 60 seconds for your statement. Thank you. Good afternoon, and thank you to Derek and Rogers TV for hosting, hosting today's debate. My name is George Daruz, and I have served Osgood Ward since 2014 with pride. 
I'm seeking the re-election to continue working on preserving our rural lifestyle while to ensuring that residents receive their fair share of services from the city of Arawa. I would like to welcome both the villages of Carlsbad Springs and Bars to Osgood Ward. I brought Osgood Ward's voice loud and clear to city council for many topics including our neglect road infrastructure, traffic intersections, communities, arenas, and more. Other measures issue I've worked with council and staff to include ward boundary changes, paramedic funding, and hiring more police officers, and keeping housing development costs affordable. Our community police is crucial to our village. It's been a pleasure to work with each other officer over the years and assist with safety community concern in our community. While my record to deliver core and essential services is well proven, I hope Osgood Ward residents will continue to put their faith in me for their third term. Thank you, George. Bruce, over to you for 60 seconds. Hello, my name is Bruce Faulkner, and I am 56 years of age, a lifelong resident of the City of Ottawa, and a resident of the newly formed Ward 20. It, is no, it should be noted that there is no incumbent candidate in this Ward, or retired candidate in this Ward. We are starting fresh, new slate under your terms. There is a proposed development site uh, for the ward uh, and we could take a, a advantage of this um, new development by bringing in social housing for the needy in the city of Ottawa mainly the senior resident and low-income disabled. My primary goal if elected your city councillor will be on this mandate and this mandate alone. I do not take campaign contributions from any corporate entity nor will I ever be beholden to a corporation in the ward. I will wi work with developers uh, but I will always have the wards residents as my primary concern. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. All right, let's move into the debate portion. Dan, I, I start with you, and this is a, a unique ward in that it is a rural community. Um, many people in this community want to preserve a particular lifestyle, but development is coming. So how do you preserve those farmlands, that the agriculture land, the green spaces that people hold dear to them, knowing that development is coming uh, Dan, you have 45 seconds to open up here. I just think we have to specifically protect Class A farmland. It's not suitable for development. Uh, there are lots of properties in, in our ward that uh, don't have, uh, that, that aren't prime farmland that could be used uh, for developing houses. All right, uh, if, if you're done, I'll just open it up then to all candidates. Feel free to jump in at any well, time. I, I, I think... Uh, that uh, we have to be very careful. Uh, the, the city of Ottawa, 80% uh, of the land is, is rural. A, a good portion of that is agriculture. And I think all of us uh, here uh, as candidates uh, want to preserve uh, that agricultural land. Uh, most of the villages uh, are, have uh, uh, defined boundaries. And so that uh, uh, protects expansion. The only time expansion will take place is through uh, the official plan uh, and that's uh, I think the key to protect uh, the agricultural uh, community. Uh, the one thing that uh, is concerning to the people in the area near Carlsbad is the T-Win project, uh, massive development that will encompass uh, agricultural lands. There's uh, two or three cases of niche farming there and so I think that uh, this project is not suitable for that location. Okay, I, I just most want to get others in here. Bruce, you, you wanted to jump in? Yes, thank you. Uh, as Mr. Thompson has said, that it's mostly agricultural, but we got to remember that this was expropriated land in 1973 or thereabouts, and it was going to be a, a excuse me, it was going to be a development for a satellite city. If this development goes through, it will bring the needed housing in an area that has the greatest ma land mass. We have to take advantage of this. The developer has already stated that they're going to put in the infrastructure for transit. It's a good deal for the city. It's a good deal for this ward. We're not going to take away any farmland. The farms are established out there. That's a nonsensical argument that if we don't stop this development, the only thing that's going to stop it, I believe, is uh, the federal government and uh, if they have the money with the spending. Okay. Go ahead, George. Uh, I just uh, thank, uh, I want to top up to what Bruce was saying. But the official plan that Mr. Thompson mentioned, yes, it is coming to us from the province, and we have to obey by the OP. And then the province want uh, 20, uh, they wanted for 25 years growth in a rural area. So where do you put them? You're going to put them in the city of Ottawa. But also all these land that they've been highlighted right now, which we're talking about, they are not rural. They're not uh, agricultural land. 
They are all highlighted from before, from previous government to be built and to be a, basically have a satellite are city. You, you and I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not really debating here why we do, but the city of Ottawa is forced and obliged by the province rules on to bring those growth. We bring the official plan to the city, to the province, and they approve it or move forward. They could say no for it, but they can approve it also. So Bob, do you so want to get in here? Yes, I'd like to, because um, the, the, the people didn't consult the people in the yeah. Tiwin area. Exactly. There was absolutely no cons consultation taking place. And um, they had to do that first. There's an awful lot of people that are very upset about it. Um, the, the, there's a natural habitat for the, the butterfly that they didn't, they didn't even know that, uh, and of course there's an, it's an endangered species. Um, there's, there's people that uh, have, uh, they, they, uh, they, they just don't understand why the city didn't come and ask them first. And that's the same way that, yes, the province want, would, wants development, but it has to be planned development, not just uh, helter-skelter development. And they're saying in this case that uh, it's going to have approximately 45,000 people, and they're just not prepared for that. Dan or Doug, you want to get well, in? Well, yeah, and uh, I, I know that the, uh, the official plan is one that's developed by this, uh, the city through consultation uh, across uh, with residents and businesses. Uh, the, the province... Uh, the the city does is the one that controls the official plan it has to be signed off by the province it's interesting that the province is not signed off on this new official plan because they have been on record as saying they have concerns about this T win project I think uh, the, is they don't have they, any plans on no, it. no no but the thing is yeah. that this your information this, are the, incorrect no, i think yours is uh, not maybe you have more yeah, but, uh, but, the, but concern, the thing is, this, this, the proper, is this development should have gone out in the South March area. Uh, for some reason, they changed the location to expand the urban boundary into this particular area. There is there's very poor infrastructure. There's no water. So those are all costs that yeah, have to be. Okay, uh, sorry, George and then Bruce. Yeah, the, 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 it makes so much sense to put the one where they're talking about where it is. Between the 416 and 417, you have no more growth. You need to put the growth somewhere. You have Barhaven, you have Riverside South, you have Findlay Creek, and it completed all the way to uh, Taiwan throughout the, to the east side, I, and I, then you I can build a I ring road about it. But you got to consult. Well, uh, you you want to put you want to put people in Kanata Marsh where there is not even. You, you have, have to, to, you have to come consult back to Dan the residents. Here, who hasn't That's had fine. a chance to say much. I know he's going to wrap, but I'll, and then I'll come to you, Bruce. Go ahead, Dan. Uh, the number one thing that I have against this project is the land itself. It's Lita clay, from what I understand, which is a very poor. Uh, basis to be starting construction, especially from what I've seen of five-story buildings, uh, multi-residential residential buildings. It's also a, quite a distance away from uh, any infrastructure as far as sewer and water. And uh, the residents were not con not consulted and uh, after visiting with almost everybody in okay. that ward. Dan, Dan, I'll stop you there because you'll be able to wrap. Bruce, go ahead. Again, um Again, um, we're looking at old history here. Lolita Clay was discussed when the Satellite City, probably when Doug was in uh, sitting at City it's Council. Not old history, when it is old history. When, when the developer knows that the, this is not a development that's not going to have the state-of-the-art state of uh, uh, engineering like Trim Road had. Trim Road had an issue with Clay. They fixed that problem. They'll have it here. We have a situation with housing. Seniors need housing. Everything else is just dirty noise. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, Dan, I come back to you for 30 seconds to wrap up on this topic. Uh, going back to my, myself visiting all of the residents in the area, uh, they were not consulted in their, in their opinions. Uh, they're definitely against it. Uh, not saying that the developer couldn't solve some of these problems by meeting with the individuals and creating setbacks that would be acceptable to all. But right now, I definitely would be against it. Okay. All right, so we'll wrap up that topic. Uh, Bob, I'll start with you for the next topic. Uh, let's talk about roads. Um, <laughs> this is one thing we hear in this ward all the time, is that people are not happy with the roads, that they're not prioritizing the worst of the roads, and they're not scheduling it around other infrastructure construction that's going on. What are some of the solutions? Bob, you have 45 seconds to open. Sure. Um, 
we've had a, a problem with our roads for, for many, many years. I, I, I commend George in the, in the fact that he's improved from what uh, Mr. Thompson used to be able to accomplish. Here, here we go, negative, negative Bob. Okay. Well, it's part of the problem. Yeah. And you've negative been part Bob, of the problem. Yeah. I don't even know why yeah. you're here, yeah. exactly. That's as a matter of fact, you've, negative, you made negative. this man okay, come let, Bob. Let, let, Bob, just go ahead here, <laughs> okay. and then we'll get into the debate. Okay. Um, what, one of my solutions is that we have an enhancement of materials that are used. We're, we're, we're using in, improper materials. We, we need increased funding for our road infrastructure. We need to get to the uh, secondary and tertiary roads and improve road safety. Um, one of the things that was I brought forward in the past was that we have paved side panels or, or paved shoulders, and okay. that's been some of the so, Sorry, added. Bob, time's up for the opening, but uh, it's it's now open to all candidates. Just well, jump in. I, 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 I would agree. Uh, we don't. I don't often agree with Bob, but uh, I know and I, I applaud. Anytime there's paving done, uh, I, I'm, I'm glad to see that. But I'm going, George, to uh, it, George, I'm going to focus it better yeah, than, but, oh, than let Mitch me, Owens. Let me finish. Uh, no, I'm just going to get to that. Mitch okay, Owens, for you. example, That's the important topic, uh, eh? Mitch Owens Road has been repaid from Ramseyville Road down the Farmer's Way, and then they stopped. And the reason that was given is the city ran out of money. And where's the, the traffic worst, coming from, Doug? The, the worst section is that wasn't repaved. Same thing with Bank Street. They repaid from Medcalf Corner to Greedy, which is great. Nice sidewalks halfway down, but the section from Medcalf out to the uh, boundary, the southern boundary, is worse than the section they paid. Okay, so let, let's I, let I, Bruce I, jump in here, and then we could go to you, George. Go so, uh, what we have is we have a, 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 a basically a company that wants to move in. Let, let's say I hate to say the name, but Amazon. Amazon was built on the right on the exit of the 417, but was not given any consideration to where that traffic would go. On my road where I live, on Hall Road, it's a, a gravel road. I'm getting 53-foot tractor trailers driving down that road all hours of the night. It can't be addressed at the city. They don't know what they could do about it, but it's being done. As Doug said, the road was stopped at York's Corner. Uh, it's, uh, sorry, Edwards, around York's Corners. Farmer's Way. Or farmers, well, York's Corners, I call it. I could be wrong, but You're you would little, know better than me. Yeah, a little wrong. Okay, I'll say Farmer's Way. Uh, these roads have to be kept up and we have to be in consultation with the robber transports the amazons of the world to explain what our concerns in the word of the ward is there's development will be a critical issue in coming forward the t win development we have to have a liaison there that will speak for the residents and i hope we can make that if elected your city council that would be a primary goal thank you bruce george and then i'll come to you dan uh, road has been it's been a major uh, it's been a major uh, for me and my uh, in the last eight years we've brought to osgood ward a lot of money every year we put over 19 million dollars it's average it's 18 20, million 20 and mr and someone used. from 2011 from 2014 he's talking to my right he's mentioning about road he brought eight million every year after year mm -hmm. record doesn't lie and the road doesn't, you can see it. So people who live in Osgood Ward, they're very happy. Our major road happy with infrastructure. <laughs> sure. Well, you need to the, pay. You need to pay road. You got to pay taxes. Are, the roads are in worse Every shape. Every one kilometer uh, in rural on. area costs one million dollar. They're be, talking about be Bank honest, Street. Be honest Bank with Street the was one of the last road that it was pushed from the previous uh, council and the master transportation plan to 2030. And we're bringing 20 Bank Street widening right now. That's way So there is a lot of a lot of. Finley a Creek was of, under Doug's reign. You're talking but, about Doug. But that should have been done when, the, when, they, when Doug was city councilor and Finley Creek was developed. Is that right, Mr. Thompson? Did you address it's Bank okay, Street? We're fixing the problem. Did you address Bank Street, Finley Creek? The residents were asking me, and I'm not a ward councilor. You're a councilor at the time. Did you address Doug, you Finley want to Creek? That or? <laughs> Absolutely. Bank, Bank Street has been uh, an, an issue. issue. You pushed it to 2030 yeah. when you were council at the Master Transportation Plan. You passed the plan, plan, Doug. You didn't and get it done. I'm the one who's bringing it forward. You didn't get it done. We your prodigy won't get it done. This year. You, you, your prodigy you, you won't get it done. Because, you didn't get it done. Because you're shutting it because you don't. It's George, not a laughing matter, George, though. George, let's let's people sit in traffic an extra 15, 20 minutes. Go ahead. Once again, as I'm door knocking, it was one of the number one concerns of the people that I spoke with was the condition of the roads. They deteriorated to the point where some of the roads in the in the ward uh, someone, I'm assuming from the city, went out and painted orange circles around the worst potholes. It's pretty, uh, pretty not very good. You should give uh, me the name of the road, Dan. Uh, Bob, well, Bob, you want to those, 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 those,
There is but no incumbent. Got, no, there is I've no got, incumbent, Now I've Bob. got someone that came from the past. There is no he's incumbent. Trying to give, he's trying to give us um, numbers from, from when he was counselor, and I don't understand even why he's here. Um, what's happened with our you roads over the years is they, 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 well, they've, they've, done an, they've, done, they've done an ad hoc w way of doing the roads. They do a little piece here, a little piece yeah. there. Rather than planning out the whole road all at once, doing all the, the things that they need to done, see, such as such as the uh, culverts or the lighting or anything. So what happens, they do a road and they'll come running back later on to do a culvert and something and start ripping it up again. Go ahead, so, yeah. so Bob, you'll have a chance to wrap, so I'll just go over to Bruce. So my question is to George. George, you're right, you guys put some money down at Mitch Owens after how many decades, but why Parkway? Why were that solar rays behind my house? Why would you pave that road? Of all the can I just can I just finish, Doug, please? Yeah, okay. And and uh, I was told that there was a bike lane that was implemented on uh, Mitch Owens. I'm sorry, a widening of the road, no, 1.5 meters. This road, if you drove it, and I know I'm sure it's your uh, and the, it is my the road. Of wood, it's your road. You see, you can't even drive a car on it safely anymore. You have to drive like in the middle of the road. Up to so up to Edwards. My previous uh, previous council will not pave a road. No one live on it, but it is a commuter road. It's a commuter road for our community. But why not from Ed? Why resident. not? But why not from Edwards to Boundary instead of doing Parkway behind? Well, Parking Way is a secondary road, I understand that. Sure. But the residents in Edwards that are listening to those trucks going by when I knock at the doors are concerned about it. Yeah. And, and it's I, a I, real concern, uh, uh, George. Listen, this is going to get worse as the development I, happens in, in Tatewin, right? You understand? I, I don't so with you, if you can't get it done in eight years, yeah. how are you going to get it done in another four? You know, let, the, let's let George answer that. Yeah, the, pro the problem with major roads, especially in the rural area, it, it's like I tell people when you see the Paving is the icing on the cake. It takes a lot of world infrastructure. You have to change the culvert. You have to check to making sure the bed of the road are, are well designed. So you could do only small section. Every one kilometer of those roads will cost $1 million in infrastructure and repair. But the so you only have so much it? money. Par you, you're going to only have so much you, money. You paved, you paved over two miles of parkway. Yeah, that's right. At, three, at three, least three, I paved it. Three you didn't. houses. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, that's right. Talk, at least talk I paved it. Talk about the people I, on Meadow Drive. Uh, There's I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Doug. You could drive the road around. You don't take care of really very like happy. Talk, talk on Piperville Road. Talk, talk yeah. where the residents are. All right. Divine. Okay. Divine. Appreciate the passion. Thank you so much, Bob. Divine is not uh, my word, by the way. No, no. <laughs> divine. That's, okay, it, gentlemen, it please. No, 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 Doug. Doug, Doug, we're stopping here. Bob, you have 30 no, seconds to wrap on this. Divine road is in. Thank you very is. much. Gentlemen, please. Um, yeah. please. If elected, I'll pursue, I'll pursue enhancements in the materials. Bruce, please. I apologize. Go ahead, Bob. If elected, I'll pursue enhancements in the actual materials that are being used in the road and and the road planning methods that are used for optimum durability of our roads. Um, also, what needs to be considered is our secondary and tertiary roads. There's roads like Buckles and other roads throughout our area that are, are in complete neglect, and of course, in the new area, where, which we have Cumberland, also needs to be done. All right. Um, that does it for this topic. We move to the next one. I'll start this one with you, Doug, and I believe Bruce touched on this. Um, earlier, and that is housing, affordable housing. I think when people think of rural areas and and um, suburban areas, it doesn't necessarily come to mind. But it's an important issue. Uh, what are some of the solutions in getting more affordable housing? In particular, a lot of people are asking for affordable rental housing. Doug, you have 45 seconds to open up. Thank you for the question. And affordable housing is is uh, a major problem across the whole city. But in the rural areas, I think it's uh, it's more of an issue. I know I was on the uh, Osgood uh, Township uh, nonprofit board. Uh, we built uh, senior apartments in Medcalf and Osgood. We have three sets of family units, uh, one in Osgood, one in Medcalf and Greeley. It's always an issue. Uh, the rural areas, uh, our population is aging. They, they want to continue to live in, uh, in their local areas. So that's something that is critical. I know that in, in Greeley, there is space that uh, could be used for uh, a senior buildings okay, or affordable thank, housing. Thank so you, that's Doug. something uh, I would you'll, work you'll on. You'll be able to debate this. I open it up to the floor. Go ahead. Listen, um, we, have, we have a housing shortage. It's a critical, it's a critical issue. It's, it really should stop everything we do in the way of construction. Everything should stop in order to build affordable housing. Um, but it doesn't seem to get the ear of the city councillors. And I don't know why. They hear from these groups like Horizon and Acorn. They've been told by residents, we face a regressive taxation. 
What I mean by regressive taxation, if you have seniors living in their home right now, double, double uh, uh, husband and wife, and one of them dies in the event of a death, excuse me, uh, the, the burden of the tax that they pay on their property falls under to one person. And there is no mechanism at city council and has never been to address this. We need somebody that's going to have a direct response in, the, in a timely manner. And don't put these people on the side, Doug. Don't shuffle them. You're, Doug, you're facing regressive taxation. Are you drawing a pension, Doug, from the City of Ottawa? Uh, not from the City of Ottawa. Well, well, who do you, from Omers. Well, okay. I, do you have a pension? Uh, I, I, I don't. I, I'm going to fall into Canada good, pension. Good. But yeah, we okay. talk, we talk, but George, we, you, you jump in here and then don't, that, we'll come back. Sorry, I, I, just, I, I don't disagree. We do, talk in, yeah. uh, the, we do talk always about affordable housing and social housing and all that. Yes, the City of Ottawa in the last uh, couple turns, we've been focusing a lot on those, but yet... yet my record on voting will show because I voted against twice in the last two years on... Uh, Who did you lobby? On, I don't lobby anybody. But you have to high, lobby. High performance, That's part of your job. The high performance... Doug does it. The high, I, development, I, I, the high I, development standard, uh, I, I voted against that one, which is, will increase, actually, and will add around ten to $15,000 per what home. What about the tax we faced? I also and which which voted one against your, the community benefit uh, the change tax. charges that they just came lately. And then we try to, we need to make sure to keep the cost Storm down waters, so George. people can be able to afford and build affordable housing. But yet we keep raising all the prices and the fees on them. So I just want to encourage sure, Jan sure. and Bob, you know, jump in at any time here because it, it is an open So form. two of the things that I would really like to see is uh, opening it up for infill housing and for tiny homes for uh, where, where an in-law or a mother-in-law, you would be able to actually construct a, a small house on the lot. A lot of our we rural property, a lot of our, yeah. a lot of our rural properties, there's a lot of red tape to do this. A lot of the rural properties are sizable enough to do that. Uh, what, another one that I know of, a farmer has a 300 acre piece of property, he wants to sever one lot for his son. Uh, the fees are almost $30,000 to maybe get a severance. Bob, those are all, those are all under provincial policy topic? statement Absolutely. though. Uh, one of the problems I see is that the city has been responsible for inflation. They constantly keep in increasing the taxes. That f therefore, the... Um, Regressive and, taxes. And, of course. And, and the... Uh, Let's call it what it is. It, exactly. And the uh, LRT has caused a financial nightmare. Most of our money our tax money is going for the to fund this LRT. Now, if we stop doing stop the LRT, any further funding for the LRT would, would exactly help the taxes. And we'd have to freeze the property taxes so that we can somehow catch up. Okay, go go ahead, Doug. Uh, I, I think one of the things, and I think it seems we all agree that affordable housing is really important. I think all uh, all candidates would agree that the one thing that we have to do is work with the province. We have to work with the developers. Uh, there is, uh, I believe, uh, 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 a possibility that developers could uh, develop 25% of their property for an affordable housing. Uh, we do have, mm -hmm. in, in relation to uh, Dan's question, we do have coach houses. We have, as a matter of fact, one in Lakeland Estates, a beautiful uh, house that was built, uh, uh, a small house, uh, I guess uh, 1,200, 800 square feet. Uh, so th this is this is a way of the daughter was able to stay with her father who lived in the house. Unfortunately, the well, dad passed away. Doug is right. We have a coach houses and we've been really working hard on it. And every five years we're doing a review to yep. making sure to make it easier and easier. But there is a challenge in rural area. You cannot just go ahead and build affordable housing because you got to find service for that. And under the province, the PPS doesn't allow you, then you need to have an MRA, municipal, uh, municipal agreement with the developer. So what do we do? We don't, they are, we don't build we, it? We have, we have an example in, Os in Osgood Ward. You have uh, Donwell and you have those uh, development in Shadow Ridge too. People are uh, under uh, communal well and communal, and we have so much issue, and we have the nitrate issue we inherited from the previous uh, township and we've been working very hard. It costs a lot of money to develop in rural. That's why we don't have a lot of affordable housing in rural. It's not the lack of trying. Doug, Doug, you're going to be able to wrap, so I'd like to get Bruce in here and then we can... I don't believe the housing cri crisis can be solved by a municipal government. We, we have history to prove that. We have an, an absorbent amount of people that are living in homeless shelters and seniors living in social housing in decrepit conditions. What we need is we need Developers like Taggart Miller or Taggart Development Group to step in and be the leader in this. 
Show leadership. Show you care, you care about the community you reside in, you live in, you raise your families in. These are the people that you have to help to make a better community. And this is not the responsibility of city councillors that can't get it done. I will be active in pursuing the developers at Taywin or anywhere else to getting these houses built before houses start. We have to. We have to build housing now. We can't build it after the development comes in. It won't happen under that under that scenario with this government. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We'll end it there. We come back to you, Doug, though, for 30 seconds uh, to wrap I up. I think uh, affordable housing, uh, as everyone's mentioned, is, is critical. I know in the village of Greeley, uh, there is there's a developer there who would have built, had property, would have built uh, uh, a senior complex, ran into red tape from the city and from the province. Uh, there is a parcel of land owned by the city uh, right in the corner of Parkway and Bank Street. It's a storage yard now for vehicles. That is, there's a possibility of developing a sports complex there and perhaps a uh, seniors building. Okay. Uh, the, uh, Greeley is the largest village. Sorry, Doug, uh, we, we've run out of time on this topic. We move on to the next topic. And George, I'll start with you. Many, many residents in your ward feel that they're not getting the same level of service as other areas in, in the city of Ottawa. And I'm talking about police and paramedics and, and fire <coughs> and, and transit. What are the solutions to, to equalizing that in this ward? You have 45 seconds to open. Thank you very much. This is very uh, critical for us. And, uh, you know, we've been hiring year after year since the previous council fired uh, a hold uh, hiring on uh, back in 2012 from paramedic. But then we catch up. In 2017, we secure funding. We hire 54 new paramedic. And year after year now, we haven't stopped hiring a paramedic and then we're talking about paramedic everybody talk about it this is a pandemic issue this is a not only an issue in Ottawa this is uh, in Ontario offloading in hospital is an issue and we need to deal with it because their uh, uh, paramedic are not uber drivers and then we have a uh, lots of people need to be going to the hospital from CTAS 1 and CTAS 2 and we've been delivering to the services but yes we need more paramedic we need the hospital we need the province to check in and helping us at the hey, offload. George, yeah, I'll open this up to everyone go yeah. ahead the, the head of the paramedic uh, association lives in Osgood Ward. Well, I've paramedic. talked to him. Just, just to, let me finish. Sure, sure. He's talked about that. God help him. There, if he there, needs an ambulance. There, yeah, the, and there God are there are solutions to the the offload problem. I know that uh, it's the a city. Doug, you the know si that. No, no, it's not, George. Oh, You're sorry. mistaken. Oh, okay. The city looks after the paramedic service. You should know that. You've been well, there eight years. You should know that. Oh yeah, and 50-50 uh, by the province. But, uh, I should, yeah. should know but, that. We're uh, talking about the offloading in the hospital. Bob, it is a provincial issue. It's not a. The no. hospital is okay. run by the province, so Th I know where my limit is. This, this and I know is, this is what a I'm problem. About. This is the problem why we have code zeros in Osgood Ward. Oh, because you the have city, only city in Osgood council. Ward. Across the city. Oh, okay. I thought you okay. said that was good. Uh, but we've had that. two, George. Two like, of you. When you have red... 14, para, when you have a 14, uh, uh, a car are held at hospitals in our hospitals in Ontario, in Ottawa. You have 14 paramedic car hold up. That's translated George, to 28 was, paramedic. Those George, are 28 the, the, FTE. The head of the paramedic I, association you know, not, has said uh, you know, uh, you've already started you're, a program. You're, you're, where saying, you have, you're saying you, like you, you're, you're trying to say that the paramedic are not doing their job. Yeah. The paramedic, we, you, I if never you put said they were doing their job. If you put a hundred paramedic in the same shift. If they're gonna wait in their car and they be treating the car as an emergency room, you'll never okay. solve the problem. You need to look at the grassroots of the problem and you need to fix the pro the problem. When you have 28 paramedic waiting in hospitals in parking lot and and the, and the hospitals making those cars an emergency room, I'm sorry, Doug, you could hire 200 paramedics. Okay, now let's George. let some others jump in here, Bob. Yeah, but Dan. I I was I was talking and he interrupted. Doug, so. don't worry, you'll get back uh, in here. Thank you guys you. have had a lot he, of time. He's wrong. Here. Go ahead. Terribly hey, wrong, Tom. George. Come on. I'm a solution sure. guy. One of the solutions You're wrong. Okay. At, you know that. Sure. The uh, paramedics go in teams of three. Have one person like they do in the States mm -hmm. go, go in the back. So that when, when they have a case, the person jumps out of the vehicle with one person going in to triage the patient, and the other two can continue on. So, for instance, if you have, um, say, 15, 15 ambulances, you can compare it down to 10, and that means that you can, you'll be able to use more ambulances. It's all right to hire more paramedics, but you also have to have the ambulances available as well. So what I see is teams of three, and that way you'll be able to increase the number of cases that are being, being triaged. Dan? So one of the solutions that I had heard is being tried in Nova Scotia where they actually have a triage unit in the hospital. When the ambulance gets there, there's a doctor and there's several nurses. The patient is offloaded within 30 minutes maximum and directly 
taken to the ward that they, they need, whether it's uh, heart or, uh, or uh, broken bones or whatever. Um, again, solving the problem of having six or eight ambulances sitting I'll in I'll remind everyone, too, you know, uh, I, I understand paramedics is a big, policing and, and fire and transit are all part of this conversation as well. Let's let Bruce jump in here. I think we have to uh, have a conversation that stretches into the future. Why not talk about a, Orleans has a hub, um, a facility that they just built off of Brian Coburg. Why not have a discussion? Why not bring that to City Council that it's overdue? We can't keep going to the Winchester Hospital. We can't keep what's transporting. Wrong with the Winchester Hospital. Well, that's what some of the people in the water do when they get when they get into a problem, Doug. That's what the real people do. Yeah, uh, and real it's, people. Uh, the Everybody real people. Yeah, real. Doug. We don't. We don't. Excuse me. I'll, um, you, you made me lose my train of thought here. We need to focus on the future. We need to focus on bringing a system to the residents instead of making the residents go to the system. It's got to be within 15 minutes. It has to be, especially with the new development. I keep on going back to that. But it also encompasses Osgood and Greeley. They could come into the new founded ward and have a hub there and get the medical treatment they need. It's not impossible. We have to just request it. We as residents have to demand it from these politicians what we want and keep on them. Don't, don't stop, be relentless. Okay, Doug, you can finish your thought and then George. Thanks. Well, it's, it's really interesting that, uh, that George uh, feels that I'm off base here, but the city uh, already, or the paramedics, have uh, uh, a program at the Queensway Carleton, and uh, there's one at the Civic Campus. The head of the Paramedic Association has clearly stated, and this, it, they can research the county of uh, region of Peel because they've gone and worked and they've solved the majority of the problem of lack of ambulances. You put two paramedics in each hospital, they come in, they download the patient to those two paramedics, and unfortunately the, the this patients is, may... This, this is, again, George, let me say, you keep uh, interrupting, are you afraid uh, that I'm going to tell the truth? And you're... you're, yeah, you're sure, uh, yes, yes, you, well, you should be. But the, the, so the two paramedics would feel. unload the patient. The, the half of the paramedic salary is paid by the province. So then oh, okay. the ambulances are free to go. And I am not sure why. The, 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 head, no, the, the legislation topic, also so comes from ahead, the province. Uh, or George will have a, a chance to wrap up as well. So uh, I just want to make sure, Dan or, or Bob, Bruce, do you want to get in here? Yeah, well, these studies that you keep on quoting, Doug, how come it hasn't alleviated the problem? Like, it's nice to say that there was a case study done. We have a study on, ongoing. But, Doug, it's not getting done. Yeah, well, because the city council won't Because, because, on but, but, yeah, but, because. Yeah. As you said, please, don't, don't interrupt problem, me. Don't never interrupt problems, problems oh, like this. You stop never, hiring. That's never. what it is. Yeah, that's Go ahead, Bob. a good job. Can I change this to topic a little bit? I'd like to uh, talk about the policing. Okay. I, I think we need to substantially approve, improve the policing in Osgood Ward. Uh, right now, we've got to bring back the local community police officer. Exactly. Uh, we have one that's, that's trying to do three wards at, at once, and we should bring back... It's very important for the kids to have a have someone that is recognizable, and, and they and the, and the and the police officer recognizes the kids too, so that um, when there's a, a situation that they know if the kid is even in that from that area, and uh, I think it's uh, I I will always advocate to increase the police budget always. Bruce, quick, yeah. real quick, uh, a first year constable makes a hundred thousand dollars a year. Uh, a senior living in Ottawa, 53% of non-public servants are living on 20% of that income. One, okay. one fifth of the income. Sorry, I got I got to stop you there, Bruce. George, you, you have a chance to wrap up here. Uh, thank seconds. you, thank you very much. Safety must be always the highest concern. Therefore, continuing to support our initiative, like hospitals offloading patients for paramedics, and we're working to make sure to hire year after year. Funding for police and promoting our volunteer firefighters is needed now more than ever. We are keep working together collectively with this council. We're making sure we're hiring. I am against defunding police, and most of people knows. I am also against fair, uh, free transit, and I'm against anything bringing buses to Osgood Ward. So those are my okay. my my. Uh, Thank you very much, stand. gentlemen. Okay, Bruce, uh, we're going to start with you with the next topic. Let's talk transparency and 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 public consultation. I think residents feel that their views aren't being heard. And we need to find innovative ways for that for, for their for their voices to be heard. And also the P3 contracts. Uh, some people are for them. Some people are against them. This is all part of this transparency and public consultation. You have 45 seconds to open here. Doug will probably correct me on this, but I think land.
hands down was a P3 development. That's correct. Um, mothballed, I think they were pay we were paying as residents of the city of Ottawa. That mothballed, I mean by there was a gate around it and the public couldn't use public lands. F about 12 million a year. OSAG is costing us 40 million a year after development. We need transparency, but we need something really critical at City Council. We need to stop this idea that they go into the back room and they go in camera and they're told the details and then they're told by the solicitor that they cannot divulge this information. If I'm elected your City Council, I will never, never go in camera and I will never hold the information that is brought up in camera. I will never hold it back to the residents. They will always be given that information. I will read the contract. Uh, All right, that's time. Will, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I, will, I, will, I will read the contract, Doug. I will give Doug uh, uh, the previous council credit because they looked at uh, Lansdom, and if, because you mentioned Lansdom and many other P3 projects that are successful, but that that uh, infrastructure was deteriorating, Absolutely. and they entered into contract. And I, there is a, probably <laughs> Doug is going to agree is. with me because they did a good, they did a great. Uh, decisions and right now Absolutely. people goes down they enjoy that is Lanzar. not a good decision I'm sorry but uh, you I must you might agree or disagree but I, I do disagree think strongly Lansdown is well, a very finish uh, uh, Lansdown is an, sorry it's, uh, Lansdown is an amazing place for us now to go yep. down we have the red black coming back to life we enjoy going uh, the life the life night we show we see the games we have a uh, lots of venues we have a uh, lots of restaurants and moving forward the city cannot afford building those infrastructure we need to lay on P3 and a good P3 is same what we've done in the land zone and I give credit to the previous council and we're moving forward now with the north side so go ahead Doug. Yep. I mean, uh, we talk about lack of, uh, of consultation I think that's a, an important point uh, the stormwater tax that uh, is uh, uh, called the ditch tax uh, was levied on uh, the entire rural area uh, on homeowners who have private wells there was virtually no consultation. It's got nothing to do with the well, dog. Uh, dog. You keep bringing in the well. That you no, I'm just saying that. No, 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 no. Oh, you, yeah, no, no. You, are, you, no. Are, you are the mayor. No, uh, at George, amalgamation. George, did, in 2001, not, no, you moved not, the taxes anybody, and you put it on people who pay water and sewer in the city. How fair is that? You used to pay regional taxes. They told you in 2001 report that you need to find funding sources. You went and you put it in the people who vote on the resort. How did you vote on the reduction? How did you vote on the reduction? Because we need to fix our water road. tax is, anyway, le is levied on yeah. every person yeah. on a private well it in was rural not a, areas. It's not a tax, by the way. It's a fee. Uh, just fee. so you know, and you understand right, yeah. the difference between fee and a tax. No, well, I just want to make sure that. Hold on, Doug, please. You've had plenty of time here. Hold on, uh, Bob or Dan. Well, the Lansdowne, Lansdowne, one of, one of the priorities of the whole city was that the farmer's markets would be uh, uh, left in place. Uh, they did manage to do that. Um, so, again, I would have to give it a bit of a, a plus. Thank you, because I was there when we started the final I'm, I'm definitely project. against the second phase of uh, Lansdowne, though, what they're trying to do with the... Uh, with the it's, high it's exclusionary. It doesn't allow. You could just look at the capital fair that just happened. Yeah. Where, where, were the, where were you, Doug, when those residents were walking up Albion? Where were you, George? Did anybody say to the city, there's a risk of these people getting hit by cars walking up Albion 20 at a time, not providing a transit? You laugh as this. As this, no. as this, as this listen, Bruce, you, this is a serious Bruce, topic, Doug, and if you can't take it serious, serious this, was a, this was a, a dangerous situation that nobody responded to at city council, not a sitting councillor or a previous councillor. The Capitol Fair there was, was never there whenever uh, with the crowds like that. It's Rito Carlton, ever. Rito Carlton. Yes, absolutely. Yes. This previous fair, there were people walking up Albion Road. Were you around to talk to the councilor? No, you're you're the you're the you're the, you're the mentor. You're yeah, the man. You're so the, easy. Yeah. You play very good hockey. Yeah. The you passed yeah. the puck. You were councilor right. for thirty years. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what you've done. Yeah, no, I was I was, right I was the one that the saved it. Yeah. Yeah. I was sure, the sure. one with. And you want me to fix it? You saved it. I'll fix it. And wasn't there supposed to be a fair there already? We're not fixing very much. Where's the fairground? I'm happy with the inheritance. Doug, thank you. Doug, I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you a question. In the deal, I didn't ask the question, Doug. Let's just hear. The in the OSAG yes. deal, there was supposed to be a, a redevelopment of that Albion Road site across, I believe it's across from Rideau Carleton. There was supposed to be a capital fairgrounds built there. How many years has it been? Decades? 
The, the city That's has right. nothing to do. Th those are private developers. If they but don't you, have the money, but they you get, promised the residents that there would I, be I, a capital's I, fair ground. Never no, promised. The city, the, the city gave. Why you guys but anyway, the of the developers, you like anyway, the LRT. You no. always in the pockets of developers. You're always getting money from the developers. The, the stormwater tax. Yeah, we we told our many stormwater. So there about, you go. We're talking about public consultation. Stormwater not being taxed. There are no cuts. The, uh, the, uh, We're talking about also, gentlemen, just a reminder of yeah. communicating with residents and, and how to do it. Well, right? absolutely. And, and hear their voice. Yeah. Right? So you, you, you talk yeah. to people, ask them their opinion on things, and, and, uh, and a, 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 the stormwater the storm storm the levy tax was. Yeah. Uh, you are on those public consultations. There, there, there were two, the two <laughs> ambulance bays in Osgood Ward in the, since the last, uh, last eight years, both have disappeared. The community police officer was in person in Greeley. I think that's their about office public is, consultation. Their office is out. They will never have an office. It's a it's a station. It's they a, can go. They do paperwork. That is a community and it's police always, officer. You drive by this road every day and you yeah. see cars all the time. You you, you don't you're talking about you, you don't understand I, how I don't understand. You, no, you don't, you're, well, you're right. Thank you. You are there for There's 30 years and I saw what you've done. Uh, but anyway, I'm not. Policing, I, I'm was just never trying to tell you. The public had no say. COVID actually taught us. A new way of doing public consultation, and thanks to Zoom and those uh, Zoom. online on, online engagement. And when we've done the official plan, we have participation, uh, amazing participation. We had over 120 people. We were able to go through them in two yeah. days. And then you, why? Because the it gave the resident. It gave the resident. It gave the resident. Uh, the time and the day to be able to do it from home and they're convenient or their car. and they don't have to rush or their car yeah, and I paid for it did. and I accepted accountability yeah. well, you if you like to bring this place. well I, I you guess should. you never did anything wrong no. and you pay and you but you don't admit to them but I do admit or to my admit mistake to okay yeah. thank well, you thank, very much thank you again gentlemen no for uh, this passionate debate uh, Bruce over to you you have 30 seconds to wrap up on this topic public consultation is not happening at a municipal governance you're, you're kidding yourself if you believe that. Lansdowne Park, there was no consultation. It, Doug will say there was, but there wasn't. There's a development that, uh, happening in our ward. We truly have to get involved. We have to form a community association, uh, like Carlsbad Association, and have these people accountable for what we're saying. We need to have representation at City Council at a ward level. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, gentlemen. We're going to change formats here. I've just got a question that I'm going to throw out there to each candidate. There'll be no debate on it, okay? I want to make that clear. No debate. You'll, each of you will have 60 seconds to answer the question. Uh, Bruce, I'm, I'm going to start with you, and let's go back talking roads because we haven't talked road safety. Aggressive driving, speeding, stunt driving, um, safer zones in schooling. This is something that a lot of people not only in your ward, but across the city, feel is very important. We haven't touched on that yet. You have 60 seconds to answer to that. Okay, so when, when we talk about uh, road calming or uh, enforcement, we put cameras up. We collect the revenue. The revenue is paid in 30 days by the infraction or the, the offender. It doesn't result in anything. We need policing in the ward. We need to have a, a, a community, uh, the community uh, center in Greeley. Open Maybe, again. yeah, open again. For, for a immediate response, we need to have police in the community looking out for our seniors and for, for speeders and for, for the children going to the schools. This is a necessity, but we also have to do it at a cost-effective measure. Like, uh, we can't just pretend that these police aren't, aren't getting paid. They're getting paid, and we have to allocate the funds properly to make this happen. I hope if... Uh, if we get more community involvement, I'll get more up to date on this. But I know the problem. It's really, it's, we have to have police in the community. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Bruce. Uh, we head over to you, George. Same topic, 60 seconds. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, we've been having traffic calming measure uh, all along. Uh, council now uh, allocated $50,000 per uh, ward, and we've been spending those money. We've been putting a lots of uh, traffic calming measure in community. We actually have right now, we're reducing all the, t all the speed in our communities in our subdivision from 50 to 40. We've done over 37 uh, traffic uh, module at speed uh, control so people can actually reduce. Because lots of people, believe it or not, they really not intentionally, but our road build for speed. So when you're not paying attention and those, uh, t those traffic control, they'll remind you to slow down. Uh, we've been doing a school zone 
cross cross walking and we've been doing improving a lot in our community we need more absolutely do we have and we can afford to put a police on every corner no we need the engagement of the community we have a great uh, local uh, police community that we work with them we the, we give them the information and we download all the information through a uh, safe road uh, road Ottawa. okay thank you very much george doug same uh, topic well, you have I'm, I'm not sure where george is doing his consultation on this topic because Almost 90, 100% of the people you talk to at their doors are concerned about speeding, even with the speed uh, digital boards. I, anything to help safety, I, I support. But they, people drive those roads that are going twice the speed of limit, uh, even on uh, residential streets. The road north of Medcalf, people are, are traveling 100 or more kilometers an hour down there. There's a speed board further down. But we need more police, uh, old-fashioned policing, where they're there uh, controlling the speed of the traffic. And, you know, uh, again, I don't know where uh, George is thinking that uh, it's not an issue. It is. Uh, you can put up all the signs you want, 40 kilometer hour, 60, 70, but the speeding is still there, and there has to be a solution. And the solution that you're... Uh, giving us right now is not working. Okay, Doug, that is time. Bob, same topic, 60 seconds for you as well. Oh, certainly. Um, a lot of the, the uh, ideas that uh, George has mentioned came from my 2014 brochure when I mentioned about paved shoulders, uh, increased, uh, around, uh, increased uh, safety around schools. Um, we, have to go, we have to go even further than that, though, and I completely agree with Bruce and, and, and Doug, where we have to have actual police out there. Actually, uh, it, 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 and actually, it's all you have to do is see a police officer out there, and automatically everyone slows down. Uh, one of the solutions that that came that, that uh, George brought forward was the uh, was uh, he's going to have um, speed bumps on uh, down Elizabeth Street in, in in Osgoode. That's an urban solution to a rural problem. All we need to have is some police sitting there on sometimes on the road, and you'll see complete you'll see a complete difference. All right, thank you very much, Bob. Dan, uh, over to you for 60 seconds, the same topic. Everybody's talking about more police, but nobody's mentioning how much this is going to cost. As I uh, had spoken with various police officers, they, their numbers, they, they just feel understaffed and overwhelmed. One particular officer is a, a regional, there's supposed to be 11 in his division to oversee and help out in certain problems. He's the only one that's on. Um, so I don't know if, if how much more in taxes do we want to pay to do this. I do like the speed boards. I think they do work. Um, it, it never it never hurts to have an officer there with a speed gun. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Dan. All right. Thanks to all of you. It's now time for our closing statements. And as I said off the top here, uh, we'll do that in reverse order. So Bruce, we start with you. You'll have 60 seconds for your closing statement. I believe uh, we're we're on the the verge of being a great ward if you have the right person and the right vision and community involvement. Um, if we keep on the path of bettering our ward, it will get better. Um, we got to really address the regressive taxation. It's one of my, my main focuses if I get elected to city council. I believe all of us are going to get to, if we're so lucky to get to a ripe old age and uh, reap the benefit of old age. Uh, Doug, please. No, Doug, you're not old. You. Just your thinking is. Uh, do I get additional time? Bruce, yes, you do. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, so we have to come to the table with all of the stakeholders, which are you, the residents, the ratepayers, and ask how we can better it. How can we mitigate the damages we're causing in your home by regressive taxation? we got to look at the municipal property assessment and how that is being run. It's a flawed system. you got to remember that the taxes you pay come from your revenue that's in your pocket, not pr from an appraised value okay. of your house. Sorry, Bruce, that, you. that, that's your extra time there. George, uh, 60 seconds to you. Thank you. I have ensured that Osgood Ward has received important and needed funding for improvement upgrade over the past eight years. Since 2014, Osgood has consistently received the most amount of asphalt each year after year, as well as significant funding increase from capital projects compared to prior uh, years. Uh, 
I secured over 37 million in my first term and over 70 million in my second term. I believe my record for project delivered more than speaks to itself. This showed by extensive number of roads paved in, in the world, pathway renewed, playgrounds replaced, facility upgrade and new improved intersection. Council 2022 needs to go back and focus on basics and keep topics at council table related to our mandate and items within the council reach. That mean project like the Metcalf Larry Robinson Arena to be completed. Our main residential road need to be repaved and we have lots of parks need to be done. I hope my record and upgrades to Osgood Ward speaks to itself when you go to the poll in this October 24th. Je suis le seul candidat qui peut parler aux résidents dans les deux langages officiels. Thank you, Doug, over to you, 60 seconds. Let me begin by thanking the other candidates uh, for participating today and to Rogers TV for an opportunity to reach out to residents in Osgood Ward and across the city. Over the past month and a half, my campaign team has delivered over 6,000 flyers uh, to homes across the, ho the whole ward. Residents are very concerned about the issues of the stormwater levy tax, ditch tax, whatever you want to call it, the LRT mismanagement, out of control spending, the t expansion into rural Carlsbad Springs, our decaying road network, a chronic shortage of available ambulances, and an overall lack of public consultation on major issues. Four years ago, residents entrusted the management of this city to the current council. That trust has been broken. Residents are looking for a change and a new direction. Please visit withdoug.ca. I firmly believe with your support on October 24th, I can help restore that trust. Thank, Thank you, you, Doug. Again. Thank you very much. Bob, over to you. You have 60 seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, you are now faced with an important decision on Election Day. You have before you two individuals, Doug Thompson, who is from the past, and George DeRusse, his hand-picked protege, he went to great lengths to get in, who have been miserable, oh, has been Doug, miserable failures as true rural representatives. They have not really respected your needs as they have voted for every expensive project the city has come up with. This has not worked to help us at all. Be careful when you vote, who you vote for. The past and the incumbent are not the answer. I'm not here to change Oscar Ward, but to help the community any way I can at the city. I will always listen to you, defend you, communicate to you, and stand up and vote properly for you on council as your true rural representative. Please not step back in the past, but move forward with me, Bob Macero. I also have here with me uh, something I've developed as a, term limit, uh, as a petition for term limits for elected municipal officials. I'd like you to take the opportunity to go and visit my website, bobmacero.ca. Thank you, Bob. Dan, over to you. You have 60 seconds. I'd like to thank Rogers for the opportunity to participate in this debate. It has been uh, enlightening. I've been visiting the residents of Osgood, former residents and the newer residents that have joined from the rural portions of Gloucester and Cumberland. And as a new candidate, I find the conversations I'm having to be enlightening and motivating. Should I have the opportunity to represent the residents of Osgood, I plan to have an open door policy in the ward office which will provide for the transparency necessary in our changing times and will ena enable ratepayers easy access to their representative. I recognize the importance of relaying the suggestions, concerns and needs of Osgood residents to the appropriate city officials, committees and council. We need to work together to make change to assist families and to provide solutions to larger community issues. I would welcome the opportunity to represent the residents of Osgood Ward 20. Again, thank you for the invitation. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you so much for your time here today. Dan said it best, it's been enlightening. It's been a very passionate debate. And I, I know, Doug, and I appreciate your time, and I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you at home for watching. Uh, for more debates, uh, head over to rogerstv.com. And don't forget, October 24th is election day. Thanks so much for watching this edition of your local campaign.